you're tuned into the show that informs, improves, and inspires racers everywhere. The Northwest Race Report. And now, here are your horsepower and performance hosts, Terry Bridges and Glenn Lippy Tower. Tonight's Northwest Race Report brought to you in part by Blue Line Graphics, Wicked Fabrication, O'Hagan's Carts and Supplies, South Bay Automotive, Creative Ink and Design, and Scott Seal Coat. Informing, improving, and inspiring racers everywhere. The Northwest Race Report, Wednesday nights, 630, exclusively at terrybridges.com. And now, back to your horsepower and performance hosts, Terry Bridges, Glenn Tower, and Jeff Eden. Racers, what's happening, guys? Terry Bridges, your horsepower and performance broadcaster and host. And uh, another edition of the Northwest Race Report. What's up, Jeff Eden? Hey, just uh, had a good Friday at the drags and loved every minute of it. Yeah. Boy, we got a great show for you tonight, guys. Let's First, let's see who's P1 here. Oh, baby, it is loaded. Dan Watkins, P1. Jason Suchich going to bring home the second spot. Matt Streeby, third. Brian Asquini is fourth. And uh, wow, we Scott Keeney in the house, right on. Well, you know, we're without Lippy, who is uh, basically he's fighting traffic at the moment. So he was coming from Renton. So he's going to be a little bit late, but uh, you know that uh, he's well, he's fighting traffic, right? What do you what do you do? The wonderful world of Washington. And uh, the cool thing is, here's the really cool thing is uh, we got our blue line graphics uh, in the seat guest actually live here in the studio and uh he's none other than the rolling thunder truck driver extraordinaire this guy can grab <laughs> gears drive sideways uh his name is rick Casebolt. welcome to the show well, rick thanks for having me terry pleasure to be here yeah man this is going to be exciting so we got a great show for you. we got rick Casebolt in the house i mean who else gets a rolling thunder driver in for the show right i mean that's uh, pretty awesome. So we're going to be talking to him a lot about uh, the trucks and what goes on with that. Get you guys uh, fired up. Maybe you guys can get some, uh, get them to come to your uh, track near you because I know they travel all over the place. But we're going to talk torque wrenches. We're going to talk um, what to do after a crash. We're going to talk about uh, driver hydration and the effects it can have on you. I mean, we got all kinds of stuff to talk about. We got results. We got some... Uh, uh, talking track with Jeff Eden. We got Lippy doing his uh, lapping with Lippy, and uh, so uh, yeah, that uh, that's what we got going on tonight. So uh, speaking of which, here he comes, the man, the legend himself. Um, oh, and he, I knew he was going to do that. Glenn Lippy Tower in the house. I was trying to get your that's your uh, your wireless thing, so you're not. Uh, I had it perfect, too. <laughs> Wi-Fi. Uh, yeah, Wi-Fi. He's a junkie for it. So, uh, yeah, that's the show. Boy, we had a, we had a crazy cool weekend. At uh, It's all right. It can stay down there, I think. you probably be... Or put it on the desk right next to you. Oh, you just turned it off. Oh, well. Now you're not going to get any Wi-Fi. Um, so, boy. yeah. So, yeah, it may not work now. So, anyway... Um, we had a crazy cool weekend at uh, Lippy. How are you? I'm good. No, you're not. You're ready to explode, huh? After that traffic, <laughs> the traffic sucks. <laughs> Tell us how bad is it? Uh, it is uh, two hours and fifteen minutes from Renton, where four hundred five comes back into I five. How how does that happen? I mean, come on, really? Too I'm... many people and not enough space. That's my uh, judgment on that. Yeah, but I mean, it, it just how does it how does it become the same problem, the same place every single day? Mm-hmm. Do you do you know why people go postal now? <laughs> yeah. I got a I got a friend. He do. Person. I got a friend of mine lives down in San Francisco, and he's uh, he lives ten miles from his house, and it's an hour and fifteen minutes. Wow. I, I, I mean, it just makes a guy want to, I don't know. I, I don't, well, Jeff knows. I don't do, I don't do traffic very good either. <laughs> no. Not, not at all. Well, Lip, um, there's a uh, beverage there for you. So uh, hopefully that'll, that'll wind you down. 
And uh, but we got a cool show for you. Um, glad everybody tuned in. You know who P one was? It was a uh, Dan Watkins. Oh, he's holding on to the number one spot. Is he really? Mm-hmm. Jason Suchich was second. Matt Streeby in the house is third. Boy, where has that guy been? He's been kind of quiet lately. They just had a race last weekend, so he's been busy. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Sean Carr in the house. Scott Keeney. You know, that's a bummer. You know, I, I was, uh, before we get into the results, I was talking, uh, I was on Facebook, and I, I said, hey, uh, Scott, you can, you come into the race. And he couldn't do it. I guess he's got some work conflicts that are going. But so uh, uh, Mike Flippin was on there as well. I said, hey, Mike, what's going on? He says, wow, man, everybody abandoned me, you know, because they switched classes. And so he had, uh, I think he had, didn't he have a clone? Is yes, that he what had he had? Clone, and yep. then everybody went to the 206 deal. So, but he says, I'm not, I'm not done. I'm just, uh, you know, taking a little break. So hiatus. Yeah. But I, you know, I was kind of telling Mike, I says, you know, I really, it really stinks when you get good peeps in there and for whatever reason, one reason or another, uh, they gotta, they gotta bail or they can't, uh, they can't make it, you know, it just, it's just really a kind of a drag. So we, we just want you to know that, uh, Scott, that, you know, we miss you there. It's not, we're beating up on you. It's just, we like having you at the racetrack. So, uh, you, you know how that goes, Rick, a little bit. Uh, well, absolutely. You know, it's, it, somebody comes and goes and, you definitely know when they're gone. Yeah. They, they make a difference, right? And I mean, and it isn't just, you know, people say, well, it's just the numbers and, and no, it's not. It's, it's the, uh, personalities. I mean, I think you hit on that, um, the other day, you know, it, there, there's good people in the sport. Yeah. And, uh, we lost a good one this last week. Yes. That, that is huge. And, and you know, as a matter of fact, um, that's a great, lead in for this jeff um i got a message and you know there were several you, you see so many on the um oh what is it you know on facebook and you read them all but let me see if i can find this one it, it was absolutely um stellar and i'll read this for you because this is uh we're gonna have a moment of silence for uh brian it says uh you know, it says uh, a guy by the name of Jared Wilson wrote this and says tonight when I got home, I sat outside for a minute, looked up and the heavens and stars seemed a little bit more full. The world felt a little more empty. I started to choke and tear up a little bit. Why am I getting upset about the passing of someone I really didn't know on a personal level or someone that I really wasn't friends with? How is this impacting me in my day to day life? How does this really affect how I operate or live my life? And then it kind of hit me. It's not about me. It's not about you. It's not about any of us individually. It's about our sport. We didn't just lose another great driver and a great person in racing. The world lost someone. Brian Clausen was everything a race car driver embodied and represented. He was someone who carried our torch proudly, waved our banner with pride. He was everything that was right about the sport and never did anything that would embarrass us or say or do anything we wouldn't agree with. I never heard, saw, watched a single time that he threw a helmet, launched, uh, launched a steering wheel, or went after another driver or threw a fit, which is something I nor many others can say about themselves. He led by example without the usual, I have to do this because people are watching. Uh, he did it because it was right and it was what he was taught and instilled upon him, uh, in the inherent and subconsciously. Brian Clausen was a role model and a hero, not just because, uh, it was popular or that it would gain him more fans or more rides, but because it came naturally to him and that's who he was. Uh, he may have only been 27 years old and five years younger than me, but I still admired and looked up to him. He is who I was. He is who I wanted to be. He did what I wish I could do. He was the person and driver I wanted to become. He was loved by all, hated by none. If I could do it all over again, I'd want to follow in the exact legendary footsteps as Brian Clausen, from birth to his untimely tragic death, because he did it more. He did more in 27 years 
touch more lives and left a lasting legacy that some of us who will live to be 100 will never come close to matching. I weep not just for Tina, Diana, Bob, and the rest of the Claussen family, but for the whole racing family and the world itself. He left this world the same way he lived it, by going as fast as possible, leading the pack, and about to park it in the winter circle. It's times like this I really turn to my faith in God to help answer the question, why? And I received my answer. He was put on this planet to do all he did and accomplish all he did in his short 27 years because his name was written in that golden book for August 7th, 2016. He could have just easily passed away on the way to or from the racetrack as that was just his date. But God chose to take him in a race car doing what he loved doing and what he does best. His death will not be meaningless as I have already challenged and pushed myself to do more and be better. Brian Clausen wasn't just a dirt track or a racing champion. He was the world's champion. Godspeed, Brian Clausen. Wow. And I got another one here that I come across Twitter today. Do not stand by my grave and weep. I am at the track. I do not sleep. I'm everybody's engine starting sound. I'm the rush and the thrill of the crowd. I'm the flash of cars racing by, the checkered flag and the victor's cry. When you are deep in the pit at night, I'm the dust and the lights shining bright. When you think of me, I'm right there, every lap and every green flag we share. Do not stand by my grave and cry. I'm at the track. I did not die. Wow. Yeah. You know, I mean, I don't even know the guy. I mean, and, and you know, Galen Stewart put up a nice post uh, on there. He says, you know, I'm I'm kind of embarrassed. I, you know, he basically said, I, I didn't follow him. I didn't really know. And, and I can say I was in the same boat. But, man, this guy must have been epic. What? I, it's just like this year is kind of where I started following because I – I seen it the first year he was going to do 200 races in a year. That was his goal. He ran the Indy 500, jumped out of the Indy car, took off and went to a dirt track and won a sprint car race that night after going 500 miles in the Indy car. Yeah. It, wow. You know, he had a passion for this, a total passion. Yeah. That I, I don't think I'll ever be seen again. Yeah. Well, you know, I'd like to say that some of us have that same passion, but, you know, you – Wow. I mean, he, he just didn't talk about it. He, he, he did, it. did it. He did it. And then they took his sprint car, which was supposed to run last night. Right. They took it to the track. Yep. They unloaded it, and I guess there wasn't – nobody even said anything for an hour. Everybody just stood around and looked. And then Ricky Stenhouse Jr. got in it and went out, and he paced the field with that car. Wow. And Ricky Stenhouse and him were very, very close. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, it is a shame. Uh, I, I think the inherent risk, I mean, Rick, you of all guys probably know that from, oh, yeah. from all the stuff you do, but, mm -hmm. um, that's just something that you, it's, it's there, but it's not something that's prominent. But I mean, you know, that that's always uh, a possibility. Well, absolutely. Anytime you jump into a, a cart, a, a car, a truck, it doesn't matter. Anytime you pull that helmet down, cinch your belts down tight there's always that specter that yeah something could go bad but you can't go out there and have a good time and enjoy yourself if that's where you're operating from out there on the track because then you just can't do it you know we all take that that risk and own that responsibility right you know? and the, the about the best thing that we can do is make sure that you know the helmets are good the belts are good or safety equipment's up to snuff you guys did an awesome piece here recently about safety gear and i'm a huge advocate for that right so you know that's always there but at the same time you can't race in fear you can't i mean there there are guys that i've seen do things in cars that just frankly scare the living but jesus out of me <laughs> <laughs> and you know i've done some pretty crazy stuff in a car but at the same time it's like there's an old adage that us racers use uh that you know you you put the helmet on, you turn the brain off, and you just go make it happen. And I've seen that happen quite often. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of like, yeah, taking off your head and putting on your helmet. Mm -hmm. And another thing, too, uh, his uh, fiance posted a day that he was an organ donor. Hmm. So uh, 
a huge amount of his organs are in somebody else today. Yeah. So that was, she was really, she said if she was so proud that he had, that was part of his deal. I mean, it was right on his driver's license. I'm an organ donor. Yeah. So. Wow. Those of you just joining us, uh, we're talking about Brian Clausen and uh, his, his untimely death. And, uh, boy, it's had a huge impact on the racing world. I mean, it's just been the buzz for for the past uh, four, five, six days. I mean, it's been crazy. But uh, I, I think uh, I think it's only right that we maybe take a moment of silence and uh, and and give Brian his uh, due respect. All right. Well, here's what I know. I I hope that you know, I would like to think that hopefully someday uh when I go or when any of you guys go that we have made enough impact that man, even if it's a speck of what this is, um I I'd, I'd be pretty proud of it, you know. That's uh So, you know, I, and, and I was thinking today, we <clears throat> I don't know, and, and I don't want to get all bummed out and everything, but, you know, when you talk about death, people fear death, whatever, you know, I, I think we should look at it, and and a lot of ladies may call us guys this anyway. We're, we're dogs, right? But if you think about it, if if we if if we lived like a dog, we would actually be doing good because dogs are here to make people feel good. So you, you come here, you're born, you touch as many lives as you can, make as many people as happy as you can and then you uh, and, and then they then they they part they're loyal they're they they love unconditionally i mean we could all learn to stand to be a dog <laughs> not in that bad sense but in the good sense if you know what i mean yeah i mean absolutely i you know you're talking about dogs and whatnot i even mine, you know, we, I'm sure we all have pets here. And, and the thing is, it, it's very much like you say. They they love you unconditionally whether you've had a good day or a bad day or not. They're always going to be there wagging their tail looking for a little treat or to throw the toy. And, uh, you know, there's not enough of that in this world from, from a human sense because we are so, we get so tied up in our day-to-day -day routines that we don't slow down for a minute and think about the next guy in line. It's because we're always thinking about us absolutely instead of the other person so I, I you know i don't know I, I guess i guess if he's uh awoken our brains enough to start thinking about that even even that alone uh is is, is huge and and it is you know and as you were talking about Klaus and uh, another gentleman's name came to mind and and it was a guy that that i'm not sure if you folks are familiar with but his name was john king and uh i got to know him as a racer down at south sound speedway uh, he was our tech guy there for years. Right. And he was, you know, the the proverbial tech guy. He he would hold you within, you know, a quarter inch of ride height and, and spacer thicknesses and whatnot. But at the same time, he was that sort of guy that would come over and help you and point things out. And, and him and I sat after the races many times just having in-depth discussions, not so much regarding racing, but just life in general. And right. his, his wife, Beth, just an awesome woman. So talking about Clausen, it, it, it triggered that thought in my mind of John and how he impacted my life and a lot of other racers that I knew uh, down there around that track in particular. Right. Very cool. I mean, that is, that's what it's all about. And it is all about, it's kind of like what we do try to do here on the show. We try to get you thinking. Um, we're, we're not experts by any means, but we try to just bring you good, solid information that's going to help you. And uh, hopefully that's, that's what we do. And, uh, but uh, we got a bunch of results. Uh, I think it's time we should probably uh, get to it. What do you think, Jeff? What do you think, Lip? Oh, yeah, we need to get after it. Okay, here we go. And tonight's Winter Circle Wednesday, as always, brought to you by the great folks at Wicked Fabrication in Auburn, Washington. Wicked Fab, since 2002, they've been giving the hot rod world the best in custom car fabrication. So when you think hot rods, think Wicked Fab. You can find them online, www.wickedfab.com, or on Facebook, uh, Wicked Fab. Craig Wick and his gang do a good job. 
Uh, I'm going to be there this weekend, 10 to 4, at Wicked Fab for the car show that they're having there. So I encourage all of you to come out and hear some country music, some 50s music, some classic rock, and kick a few tires and whatnot. Uh, West Coast Late Models, we're at Yakima. Do you follow them? Uh, you probably don't follow them a lot, but you probably do follow them, right? Yeah, I look. Randy, a little bit. Randy Marshall Jr. wins it. And uh, our own uh, former uh, quarter midget standout, Max Schroeder, was sixth. Uh, the minis, Josh Washington won that. Uh, let's see here. They had, uh, looks like Bo Bartlett. Oh, excuse me. Bo Barrett wins the uh, bump to pass. Hobbies was Mike Hill. Hornets was Scott Burby. The youth Hornets went to Kayla Mitchell. And the Super Stocks went to, uh, which may be the Hobbies. That's That was uh, Mike Hill. So uh, good stuff there. Wenatchee had their bump to pass uh, deal there. Uh, the, now, I'm going to assume the Thunder Cars are the bump to pass, right? I, I did, that's all I saw there. So Lloyd Sims won that, and Doc Holiday, Chad Holiday, wins the street stocks. Now Chad Holiday is a former uh, boy. He's uh, crew chief for Garrett Evans for many years, and uh, on a, several of his winning teams. And so uh, good to see Chad win that. Uh, State line Speedway, you know it was there. The Idaho two hundred. <laughs> two hundred potatoes. 200 well yeah 200 potatoes though i also call those laps as well um but garrett evans was your pole sitter uh let's see here what they have uh 22 cars qualified garrett evans was fast time at a 13055 and uh that was 63 hundredths between 1 and 22 that's how close qualifying was wow yeah so Good stuff. His son Jan was there. He qualified like six quick. So, I mean, it was awesome. Brittany Zamora, first year lady, doing an awesome job. She, you know, she snuck her way into the fourth uh, spot overall in the championship point standings. So, she's doing she's doing awesome. But uh, Braden Havens wins it. Garrett Evans was, uh, <clears throat> I don't know what happened. He was leading it for a long time. But Havens wins it. Uh, Ryan Wells. Uh, was in there so uh good stuff there um you can check out the interview it's on uh it's on facebook you just got to go to uh northwest uh asphalt results uh to, to check that out let's see uh what else we got here oh cycle land had the uh the 500s were down there ryan foster wins it kyle allison second mike wheeler third uh, looks like Mike Tarter was fourth. Jesse Caldwell fifth. Uh, let's see. Johnny Burke was ninth. Or no, ninth. excuse me. He was eighth. But here's the cr- crazy one. Tyler Seavey, 15th. That don't even, that doesn't even seem right. He must have uh, had a flat. Or something. Uh, Dan Whitley wins the intermediate uh, division. Sportsman division with the Kyle Whitley. So the Whitleys were killing it. Um... Let's see. Did you see any of the? Did you see the video I sent you on your Facebook page of Mollus <clears throat> or uh, Shea Chavis at the Big O? Oh yes, I did see that. You, you know, okay, All so all in the mail, dude. I am not kidding. Did you see it? Mm. Oh, good night. I would have to say that was probably an injected Jawa, but that's just a guess. Well, okay, so let me just say, so I, last night I'm looking at this thing and I'm going, you know, they were, they were. How big is this Patriot? You know, this was back in, uh, uh, I think it was South Carolina Patriot Speedway. It's a quarter mile. Woohoo! It was a big and, one. And, and look wow. at this. Uh, uh, what did he qualify at? Fast time went to Shea Chavis. At an eleven seven five zero on a quarter mile. Jesus, that's fa- That's just as fast as the pavement sprints are at South South. Dude, that's crazy Absolutely. fast. I mean, you could see it on there too. I mean, they were hauling the mail. Wow. So, uh, Chavis wins it. Uh, let's see. Uh, Austin C was second. Uh, Mullis third. Sarchet was fourth, and uh, Ed, is it Schreifels, 
was fifth. Wayne Felch finished sixth, and Jim Bob Clabber he didn't uh, Clabber didn't start. So uh, I don't know what happened. He was uh, he was there though. Yeah, it was Old a Jim big Bob. field. I think there was fourteen cards, fifteen cards, sixteen. 16 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, qualifying went Chavis, Robbie Sarchet, Jerry Mullis, Kenny Buff, Austin C. Uh, so you know, um, uh, Clabber qualified fifteenth. Felch was sixth. It was crazy cool to see Felch's ride there. It was like, oh wow, there's Wade. You know, it was like pretty cool. So um, yeah. And then uh, we they went uh, up in um, the uh, Empire region, got together with the Keystone region up there, the UAS, and they had the John Smith Memorial, and that was at Blairsville Speedway. Denny Furrow wins it, but the uh, crazy thing was uh, John Gardy was there, and Gardy was right there. He qualified really good, and they were going at it, but he spun, so he ended up finishing eighth. So with Gardy finishing eighth and Furrow winning it, they tied for championship points. Oh. So they had to go to the UAS rule, which was first the most wins, which went to to Gardy. So he ended up Gardy ended up winning it, uh, the the overall championship. But Furrow won the the main event. So I just thought that was cool. Yeah, I mean, definitely. Y- you love it when it when it's that close, but. You know the Keystone National or the Keystone Region and the Empire Region worked together so they could get enough carts there and have a really good show for this memorial. So hats off to all the administrators and everything for juggling and pulling the strings and making it happen. Yeah, doing what they had to do to make that happen. Uh, UAS owner Mark Bergfeld was twelfth. Uh, he DNF'd, but uh, so I think I think Bergfeld's got he's got some. Uh, He's got some work to do on his uh, program because he breaks a lot. <laughs> I mean, sorry, Mark, but y- 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 you do. I mean, we got to get you finishing, pal. He's uh, busy putting the he, show he on. He is. He is. He is. And I'm and I'm sure that has a lot to do with it. But, um, you know, still, um, by now he should have this down to a science, right? I you mean, would think. You would think. Well, that or you need to, to – you know, claim somebody else's cart. Well, I'm no, using yours today. No, I, I don't think it's a matter of claim. I just think it's a matter of, you know, uh, your focus and your, you know, oh, your yeah. getting it in. There. I mean, he's, he's, I'm sure I can only imagine how many fires during the week he's putting <laughs> out, but. Uh, Climbing in the carts, probably the only sane thing he does during the week. Yeah. So exactly. You guys have run on the quarter, right, Rick? Yeah. That's uh it gets a little snug on a quarter. And, what do you guys? What would be a fast time for you guys on a quarter? I don't know. I don't look at the clock when I'm racing. You don't. <laughs> well, you so can't, can man. you? No, I tell you what. If you're looking at the scoreboard, you're uh, you should be in the stands. You probably should. <laughs> but eleven seven five zero. I'm sorry. That's uh, that's impressive. I mean, you know, it's just way impressive. So definitely. Yeah, Lip. You got anything? You, well, we had a great weekend at. Uh, at ORV, I mean, yeah, definitely a great weekend at ORV. Uh, plenty of people showed up, plenty of help showed up, so it was a uh, it was a great weekend down there. I did not bring any results with me because I did not go by the house. So. Well, I, I know that uh, we got uh, I, I I snagged some for you, so I know we can go through them because well, Ronnie Cox won his ninth uh, straight there, um, and, but but but. The big deal is Singleton, they got their stuff to live for an entire heat race. She actually won the first heat race. She won her first heat race of the year uh, in the 24. So they kept it running. Definitely, yeah. I think it was the second heat she uh, she pulled that down. And uh, I believe that uh, Rusty King came in second in that one. He uh, did. So what an improvement! And he was there. You know, Ronnie had a, a coil wire falling off in the main, and had I don't know if Rusty just didn't know or, but I, I kept thinking, you know, Rusty, he's he's you got a shot at this, <laughs> you know. But uh, keep Ro- chasing, keep chasing. Yeah, Ronnie hung on to win it, and uh, he 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 breathed a sigh of relief too when that thing was over. I'm I'm sure of that so. Uh, the other cool thing was, uh, how about Ed flat and, uh, rusty in the, uh, stock animal. Class. Yeah. That was a fight for sure. 
That I mean, was uh, some good racing there. Yeah, Jeff, you should have seen it. They were side by side for what? Probably, I'll bet you it was a good four laps in a row. Just, I mean, just like they were parading around. I mean, it was it was really exciting. I would say half the race. Uh, Heavy was the same way with Rusty and uh, Kravitz. Uh, Daniel, they uh, side by side for the first three or four laps. Uh, that was some good racing there, too, with nobody bumping and crashing into each other. Yeah, you know, and, and that's what we were saying. It's like, boy, you know, you you can do it, right? You you don't have to move somebody to get by them. You can actually do it if you do it. I mean, because Kravitz was coming from, he was coming from Walmart down there in Gray's Harbor <laughs> driving in there in turn three, you know. It yeah, was crazy. It was some good racing. We did have a second groove for sure. The track was a little bumpier than I like, but there was a second groove and people were using it. It was uh, some good race and 206 class was good as well. Uh, you know, little, uh, little, that got a little bit rough, didn't it? It was a little messy. You know, that's just uh, spec racing, you know, because these guys are so close together and uh, there's not a lot of room for error. And when you do have an error, it's hard to make up ground. So nobody wants to give up ground. So right. it uh, it was a little messy out there a little bit. But, you know, they're 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 figuring their way through the field. And the uh, Predator class was also, you know, uh, a great race all weekend long. Yeah. So, uh, uh, Nate, Nate ended up winning that bad boy, Nate Culver. Yes. And, uh, so he and Kyler were going at it. So that was, it was, it was really good. I mean, you have to get case bulled out or are, are you, are you, you got an event on the 20th? Uh, actually, yeah, we're going to be at Grace Harbor. Ah, close, but yet so far, but I'm chomping at the bit to come out and check out the carding. Yeah. You, you, I mean, you're just gonna, it's going to be under the lights. It's going to be, it's going to be epic on Saturday. I mean, it, not this Saturday, but the 20th, but, uh, did you go by this weekend honking your horn? Uh, possibly. <laughs> I thought that was you. I, I was there in spirit, Lippy. Yeah, there you go. I knew it was. <laughs> was that you? Really? You drove by honking horn? It could have been. <laughs> I, I, you never know where I'm going to be on the weekend. <laughs> well, we know Jeff wasn't there because he was at... Sound uh, Sound? No, he was at uh, the Drags. No, no, not Saturday. Oh. Saturday, I was at the car show for the Lacey PD. Oh. oh that would have been a good one. Yeah, we had There was about 80 cars there. Wow. And then Claris Ice Center across the street had another 80. Wow. So it was a good... Yeah. It was a good show. It was fun to watch the kids interacting with the, the Lacey PD. They had them in the cars letting them do the sirens. And cuffed? Yeah, they were cuffing them, <laughs> and they were doing all kinds of stuff with them. They had uh, they had one thing that was kind of cool. You could take the little ones down, and you could fingerprint them, and they'll put them on file. So if your kid ever you know comes up lost or something, they got fingerprints. for. It's pretty kind of a neat deal. Yeah, it is. Yeah, that's cool. That's really cool. So I found the uh, the results from uh, thank you to uh, Streeby Straby. Yeah, he's going to blame me if they're inaccurate. They're just only as good as what Bridges was announcing on the deal. <laughs> <laughs> so the uh, the uh, Predator class uh, went to Nate Culver. Matt Finch comes in next. Rusty Rossmeyer comes in third. Randy Hansen comes in fourth. The uh, LO206 was uh, Brandon Finch and Brian Wilson. Tony Wilson comes in third on that one. Uh, KT Light, it was uh, Daniel Watkins and uh, Jesse Clark and Steve Miller, Jonas White on that one. Yeah, that was uh, Heat 1, I think. And no, that, that was the main there. Heat 1 was uh, Daniel Watkins, Jonas White, Jesse Clark, and Steve Miller. So that was the main. Oh, that's what we have. Huh. And uh, let's see here. Sportsman was uh, Rusty Rossmeyer, Daniel Watkins, and I believe that's all we had in that class. It uh, was. And then uh, the Stock 4 cycle was, uh, I believe it was uh, Rusty at the line, and Ed Flat, Flat comes in second. And they traded places uh, throughout the uh, the run on that one. And uh, I believe the uh, main was uh, Ronnie Cox and uh, Rusty, Rusty King. King. And then uh, 
There I was, was I think it was uh, a, was it Alton or was it no it was uh it was Kevin White. Was Kevin White. Yeah. yeah. Made the podium. Came in third on that one. Heavy was uh Rusty Rossmeyer and Kravitz and then uh uh Ryan Wright I believe Correct. came in yep. on that one. You know who I was impressed with too was was Jared Wright. I thought he ran I thought he ran really good the three cart. So yes, he's ran better. Yes, this last much weekend. better. So uh, and then uh, junior two four cycle was uh, Jonas White pulled. Or excuse me, not Jonas, but uh, uh, William White pulled that one down. And Wild uh, Willie. Yes, thank you. And uh, James King came in second on that one, and Jasmine Hildebrand came in first in hers, which would have been junior two two cycle. Correct. So uh, that's what I have there. Good stuff. Tons of help. It was good. The weather tried to do its thing again. 80 degrees all week, and then it actually, well, it misted. But I thought, if it rains here, I am going to blow a gasket. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, good night. It's been like that every time we go to run. Mm-hmm. All week, and then race day, you know. Yep, there you go. We had that happen at Skagit this year. Yeah, it, it's just uh, it's a joke. Sick of it. Totally sick of it. What do, What do you What do you have? Well, let's see. We got a bit, a little bit of Gray's Harbor. Three uh, sixties went to Colton Heath. The midgets went to Nick Evans. Street stocks Jack Parcel and tuners Corey Sweatman. Oh, cool. Corey, Corey's had a lot of rough luck. <laughs> he, yeah. He's flipped one this year, and his street stocks blowed up a couple times, so it's good to see him get something. Yeah. Uh, he said he said blowed up. <laughs> blowed up. <laughs> Done blowed up. The racer in him coming out. <laughs> yep. Um, Skagit, the sportsman sprints went to Kelsey Carpenter. The mods went to Kevin Smith because Lawrence O'Connor got DQ'd because his muffler fell off. Um, still haven't figured that one out because I went through the rules. I didn't see anything where they even got to run mufflers. The SCS cars, the sprint cars, they have to run mufflers. If theirs fall off, they get. So I guess the, I guess the mods are running against with that rule too. So the tuners went to uh, Freddie Vila. South Sound, the late model A main, Mike Carlson. The legends A main, Devin West. Oh. Number two, Tristan Hader. Oh. Them two have been trading it all Hader's year. a shoe. Hader's uh, so a shoe. Devin, Both of them are a shoe. Yeah, Devin's, Devin's come a long ways. Yeah, cool. And, and then the baby grands went to Kurt Boyle. Sunset, two modified races. They were two separate ones, 250 lappers. First one was John Campos. Mm -hmm. Kyle Yak finished second. Wow. Race number two, Kyle Yak, John Campos. Wow. So the two of them boys had her dialed in. They were, that was then looking at the times, they were like really, really close to each other. So that was awesome. Cool. Awesome. Super, style, Super Streets went to uh, Arnie Case. 600 restricted was Lane Taylor. And the 600 open was Jeff Broadwell. God, that Lane Taylor's winning everything. He's good. He is good. Uh, down at Willamette, they had the wingless sprints, and that was Rob Lindsay. Super Sports went to Brian Winkler. Classics, the B main was Scott Linham. A main, Justin Evans. And the Hornets went to Tracy Muse. We've said that name a lot in the Hornets. Mm -hmm. And Cottage Grove, Extreme Sprints, Cooper Devins. Oh, he, he's been hot. Yeah. He's been way hot. Cooper Desbians has been way hot. Mods had like 26 or 28 cars there. They had a B main, and they went to Craig Britton, A main, Jesse Williamson. And late models went to Brian Crunk, and the Hornet A main was Josh Corley. Nice. I-5 quarter midgets had a race after mm -hmm. after all they went through. I'm surprised they had one this quick. But junior novice went to Jaden Hurt. Junior or senior novice went to Skylar Putt. Cool. Junior Honda went to Zach Rell. Senior Honda went to Zan Miller. Heavy Honda went to Megan White. Uh, light 160 went to Zan Miller. 
Uh, heavy 160 went to Austin Treborski. Junior Animal went to Destiny Miller. Senior Animal went to Austin Trabowski, and he also won Briggs Heavy. Wow. Trabowski getting it done. That's very cool. Very cool. And I can't give you no finals to the drags because they got rained out on Sunday. Yes, they did. Oh, yeah. So two of the, the Top Fuel and the Funny Car finals will be run in Brainerd this next weekend. Uh, pro Stock was supposed to be run at Brainerd, but the one the one Pro Stock driver wasn't entered to go to Brainerd, and he told him, I just I can't afford it. He wanted to go to Indy for that race. And uh, so the owner of the car that was in the other lane says, we will wait and we will run it at Indy. That's Cause cool. Because he, he wanted two cars there. And what's really cool about the guy that was in the finals is Aaron Strong. Aaron Strong is a local boy from Puyallup. Mm-hmm. So wow, that's if, awesome. Aaron Strong Trucking. Have you seen the strong trucks running around here? Mm-hmm. That, he's the owner of them. Wow, cool. So, so And then uh, everything else that all the sportsman classes will be run at Seattle next weekend because they're having a division race. So all the all the finals, again, everything was in the finals. So they'll run all of them. All right. So who, how about in Funny Car? Who was? Uh... Uh, <laughs> the, <laughs> I tell you what, I never seen a class so unbelievable. They broke record, national records, not just track records, national records. The first session, Courtney Force ran a, uh, 86, 386, and this 386 was new national record. Huh. Next car out, Del Worsham. He runs a 84. <laughs> it just continued. And it, and on Sunday, he ran an 83. Worsham did? Yeah. That's why he's my boy, man. I'll tell you what. I'm telling you, Del gets it done. Um, and then, then uh, the, they did have one instant there. Courtney Force bounced off the wall and bruised her leg really, really bad. They actually uh, sent her out by ambulance to take her to the hospital to make sure it wasn't broken. But she slapped the wall in hard. But she seen the car in front of her. I was having trouble, so she thought she'd get back on it and then hadn't settled down yet. And then, bam. It, she moved the wall. Wow. Two feet. She pedaled it a few too many times yes. on that one. Well, yeah, and it hit you know where, two feet. If you if you go back and look at the video, she hit right where Ashley hit <laughs> when Ashley crashed her car there. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> two, three years ago. That's exactly it. You know, but uh uh if if the wall hadn't have moved, I, I would have to think that she would probably be in the same shape as uh Alexis. Alexis yeah. is right now, you know, with the hip injury because she slapped that wall hard, man. It's just I, I'm I'm glad that wall moved a bit. Well, that's that's the one thing I I like the design of those walls up there because they're cable held. They exactly, got, they got pins run down through them, and there's cables between them, so they got flex. Right, so it's they just will like flex. A freeway. So it's not just a solid. No, like a like. Well, now you know the you know the big pillars like they have on the free that go they're skinny up top and they kind of get wide at yeah, the bottom. K rail. Right. Now, they don't, they, run, they don't run those, right? No. I mean, no. Well, they're K rails, but they're reversed. They're flat side into the track. Mm-hmm. You can't climb them. That's, yeah, exactly. Okay. That's we'll, ver- we'll get in a little bit more on that in my segment. Very, nice. very cool. Yeah, we got quite a bit to cover. Well, before we get with our guests, those of you tuning in, ooh, Dave Chisholm in the house, Scott Warning. Hey, I got to say, uh, the Appalachian or uh, Ohio UAS uh, deal that was sweet too. Um, Joe Warning was fourth in in that one. Um, I'm trying to think uh, who got that. Let me see here. Uh, uh, boy, I had that too. Um, where is it? Oh, Dory Patton won it. So uh, that's pretty cool. And uh, fourth was Joe Warren. He was. They were hauling the mail. That, that they also had a video of that on there too, and it was uh, it was quite impressive. But um, yeah, there was a uh, boy. We got just tons of them. Peyton Reed was fourth in the uh, six hundred feature at uh, Deming, and uh, let's see, Industry Fields, uh, the SoCal UAS. Chris Gibb wins KT. 
Nice. And Glad to see that. Yeah, Joe Gibb was second, and then Joe went on to take the open class. Um, you know, Mullis won the big old modified uh, four cycle feature, the big O back there at Patriot. And, uh, you know, I, I, uh, Chris Gibb could be, he might be this, he might could give Passanate a run for his money. Uh, what do you think? It's, uh, Gibbs are good. I'm just going to say that Gibbs are good. So, uh, yeah, uh, Passanate is really good. He is really good. I got to say. But so, you, you never can count out those dang Gib boys, though. They they come to play. Nor the wet line team, not one of them. They're yep. all heavy hitters. Yep, that's for sure. But uh, for those of you just joining us, our, our Blue Line Graphics in the Sea guest is in studio, and he's a rolling thunder truck driver, uh, Rick Casebolt. So we're going to get with him here in just a few minutes and talk about the trucks and what makes them tick. So he's been kind enough to sit and be patient while we go through all this stuff. <laughs> but, um, you know, um, Lip, and, and you can help me out on this, but I was thinking, you know, so so many times I, I think this gets overlooked. Now, we were talking about that 11,750 that's so fast mm-hmm. on, on a quarter mile, right? Right. So what happens when, let's just say, you you get turned and the and the the thing smacks the wall and you haul it back to the pit area there is no you know they give you guides for setting up but they don't really give you anything for when you for when you crash so i kind of i kind of sat here and and thought you know um uh it should be easy but you you, you just never you just never know and so I, I kind of made a list of things to do um, after, you, after, you, after you crash. Nice. I'm excited to hear this. Yeah. You know, and, and, and uh, you know, I, I don't know. You, you can add as necessary, but this is just from my, uh, you know, experience watching. But a, a lot of it depends where you hit, too, right? I mean, nine, I mean, it depends if you get turned backwards or up. But if you get hit in the front end... I mean, obviously, the the first thing you do is you gotta you gotta go check exactly where it hit. So if it hit left front, right front first, you gotta go there. But you know, you gotta check all the heim joints, um, which you don't want any play in those anyway. And you want to make sure they're timed so that when you wiggle your tube, that they flop back and forth. You don't want one flop in one way and one flop in the other way because you, you, then they're out of time. That's definitely a bad thing. So you want those times. You want to make sure they're not bent or, or you know, the. Uh, but you got to you gotta really check them. The tie rod tubes as well, you want to make sure they're straight. The spindle and the spindle arm, that goes for, you know, not only just where the hub slides on, but it, it's the arm back there. A little bend there can throw you out. Um, the spindle mount, the kingpin mount, uh, the bolt that goes in there, the wheel hubs and bearings. Uh, the steering shaft and the steering wheel, um, and even if you hit in the front, you should still check your seat and seat strut uh, area because I think uh, can you not possibly crack a a seat strut or a seat mount and maybe not know it? Oh yeah, definitely. I I lost one over in Spokane before my crash and had to replace it. So yeah, that's definitely something that uh, you're gonna want to check for sure. It, right. Uh, that's uh, you are the second heaviest thing in your cart, so your seat uh, struts and mounts take a lot of abuse. There you go. The chassis frame and area of impact. Here's one that I think gets overlooked a lot because I've seen it a lot on the asphalt side, but. Uh, the motor mounts, the motor mount clamps, and the chassis underneath the motor mounts. You would be absolutely blown away how many times uh, that they can't figure out what's going on and the frame has been broken under the motor mount where you can't really see it. So I, I think that's uh, that's an area that, that you should check there. I mean, and don't underestimate that because it, it can be... Uh, I've seen it time and time again. Um, the brake pedal mount, the rods and clevises that hold it, and 
uh, the master cylinder, right? So before you hit, what do you do? You're cramming your foot to the floor, which is uh, uh, possible that you're going to bend your, your pedal or the clevis there or it jams in and you're full blown on the master cylinder. So it punches through the piston and you got a mess there and you don't know it. So um, I don't know. Is, do you think are you in agreement with that, Lippy, on that? Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, well, brake or clutch, either one. It's it's easy for the driver to override those, even, you know, the the accelerator when uh you know you're you're just wanting to go faster so you're pushing harder and harder and harder and it's it's easy to over center any of that stuff or to uh stress any of the uh joints or ligaments that hook all that stuff together it uh even cables you know uh any of that stuff can happen right on and then uh you know you want to ensure that all your nuts on all the necessary bolts and cotter keys are always there and keyways i mean you just you just never know you're in a hurry you're putting stuff back on you you forget to put this in or that in and so you know when you're repairing a crash even though you're in a hurry gosh dang it you know i used to tell the guys help me on my car you know just slow down it's okay i mean it, it's gonna take what it takes you know be in a hurry but i mean be quick but don't hurry right i mean that's uh that's the big one there because you don't want to you, you don't want to end up making a bigger mistake because you were hurrying trying to fix the other one so um and then lastly if your helmet has hit anywhere um i don't care if it's your steering wheel i don't care what it is um boy that's why i i, I just find it amazing these guys toss their lids in the seat and they just kind of throw it anywhere y you know you could potentially be hurting yourself because that thing could be damaged inside where you can't see it they said you know they've seen cracks in the actual foam and stuff on the inside of the underneath the you know the clear and all that stuff where you can't see it so if your lids hit anything solid um you need to get that thing in and have it have it checked i mean even if you think it's really not that big of a blow i mean it's just I just can't stress enough. I mean, it's your head. You're going to do what you want. But like Bell Helmets used to say, right? If if you got a 10 cent head, then you wear a 10 cent helmet. <laughs> it's that's the way it, that's well, the way it is. Kind of making it black and white. There it is. I mean, so I'll leave that on to you. But but that's kind of the thing. I mean, I know some of that sounds real obvious, but it's something that doesn't get talked about a lot. Um, it's something that you could easily overlook, but the main thing is when you're in repair of that stuff at the track, you're trying to get back out there. It's like, uh, it's like an old basketball term we used to use, you know, it's be quick, but don't hurry. Well, that was like down in Vegas when we got caught up in that wreck during the, on uh Friday night, it was, the, the car wasn't good. I mean, when you take the right front tire and you lay it on the nose, yeah, you, you stuff's some, messed up. You got serious damage. You right. Know? The tin work was all wadded up, and the record guy brought it in. I shoved the stands underneath it, started looking for what we needed to do, and an hour and 15 minutes later, that car was sitting on the racetrack with it already been towed. But I don't know half them people who were working on the car. Hmm. I don't even know where they came from. <laughs> that's what I love about racing. Yeah, that's uh, it's cool. But you love you love the help, but you've also, I think, as a crew member, you've got to take the bull by the horns and say, "Hey, it's great, but yeah, we had to slow some people down, right? And, you know, right." And and I and I don't believe you should be feel sorry for or feel bad for for speaking up like that. No, no, I was, you know, the car wasn't wasn't going to go back out unless it was safe. There was right. two ways about it. right. Well, that, uh, that's that's good. Rick, you got any input on that? How about when you guys uh, tear something up? Are you... Uh... <laughs> well, <laughs> when we tear stuff up, it's a bad deal. Yeah, it's when really I, torn up. I, I was, I was kind of chuckling to myself talking about the, the safer walls at, up at the drag strip. You know, when, when we hit a wall, they, they move severely, and they're right. not soft walls. Uh, generally, if we have something major happen, you know, we've got a crew of... Uh, Anywhere between uh, could be 12 to 15 people at any given race that'll jump in at a moment's notice um, and just kind of flock to whatever the issue is. Uh, everybody has their part to play, and, and we all kind of know what that is. 
So we'll jump in, we'll check toe, we'll check stagger, we'll make sure we don't have anything busted. Um, biggest thing is their safety gear. Um, that, that's one of the things that Mike uh, Gibbons, the owner of Rolling Thunder, has right. stressed to us time and time again. You know, safety, safety, safety. That That's rule number one. We're there to have fun and have a good time, but safety, safety, safety. So with that said, when something gets you know, bent, broke, or bashed, we just jump in and try to uh, do the best that we can with what we have to work with at the time, uh, make sure it's safe, make sure it's functional, and uh, get it back out as soon as possible. Right on, right on. Lip, you got anything, you got, uh, you got anything you want to add to that? Uh, no, it's just be thorough, and you're right, uh, as far as the go-karts go, uh, the, the tube we usually break and have broke several times is, uh, the one that goes underneath the front of the seat that goes over and hooks in in front of the engine or under the engine. Uh, that's typically the one we break the most. And, uh, as far as go-karts go, you come into the corner, it holds, uh, it turns in well, but at the uh, apex, it snaps loose. And it's uh, very unnerving snaps loose. It uh, It's very loose. <laughs> and so uh, as soon as we see that without uh, knowing that a tire went away or down or anything else, we, we check the chassis. Um, and, and we've had to weld ours together a few times. So it's uh, generally the one that goes across in front of the un- under the seat that does it for us. Wow. Yeah. I, yeah. I think Stackman had that last year at the uh, – boop yeah exactly yeah you know, same same chassis well we all well we run legends he runs legends so it's just uh you know it's it's not that it's a bad chassis it's just that we use them a lot so ours have got quite a few laps on them with uh over heavy people in them <laughs> and jeff looks at him like <laughs> and you're saying rusty's bigger than i am is, is that that's it i'm not Ru- coming out anymore <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hurt your feelings. Um, rusty he didn't mean that uh, it's the truth no <laughs> <laughs> wow that's well you know what that's the good thing about lip you always know where you stand that's the good thing <laughs> Well, so hopefully you 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 got something from that. I don't know. Like I said, a lot of that stuff's obvious, and, and a lot of us, we're just just kind of maybe bringing it to to your uh, a, attention. But and then lastly, I, I want to get because I, I know I told you about um, you know being hydrated at the track. I, I I tried to find some some better info, and I I couldn't find a a, a gob of it, but. Um, you know that when you go racing, uh, and they did a thing. There was a deal on on karting too. They did it, but your uh, your heartbeat goes up to between one hundred and fifty and two hundred beats a minute. I mean, that's you know they compared that to like uh, running. Uh, well, like now we take the Formula One because that's they say that's the highest. Those guys are in there a lot, but so. Take it and just, um, even though it's Formula One, it's much different. I mean, I, I'm going to say really karting wise in a lot of ways, we might be the, we might be close to the same as, as that Formula One stuff. The only, I mean, if everything was relative, you know, size and speed and, and all that and grip and, and everything. But, um, uh, and you know, they say 150 beats for long period. That's like running a marathon. You lose, you know, like three liters of, 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 you know, actual body fluid, you know, through sweat and whatever else. I mean, man, you, you start talking about your performance going down. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, look what happens when you're not even really doing anything and you're sitting out in the sun, uh, you know, and you get, you get, you know, uh, heat stroke and stuff. I mean, you're just dehydrated. You're just, so I'm telling you guys, it's, it's real, uh, it's real important because they say it's like um, running a marathon. So make sure you're hydrated. But you can also go too far. You don't want to overhydrate yourself either because it can have adverse effects. But they say don't eat three hours prior, no protein, and you want to have complex carbs. So the you know helps you have stuff to burn. Um, so really all I'm saying is if you're not hydrating yourself, you can only be cheating yourself. Uh, out of you know times tense whatever you call it 
But uh, it's something that I know everybody overlooks. I know even Lippy says at the driver's meeting a lot of times when it's hot, you know, be sure you guys are drinking water, you know, because uh, it, it does make a makes a, a big difference. So absolutely. Yeah. I mean, you <laughs> absolutely. Uh, I mean, we're we're I'm probably drinking, you know, a couple of gallons of water a race day. You know, that's we've got uh, one of those gigantic white got coolers. You know, it's like holds 500 bottles of water. It seems yeah. Like. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that thing will be loaded at the start of the day and by the end of the night we're scrambling going to the concession stand looking for more water wow really that's a that is a that is a good thing um that's a that's a really good thing what's on your mind man uh it's uh all good we going into my segment yeah we we can we can do that uh we're gonna go and hit uh lapping with lippy we gotta get. We gotta be sure we get to. Uh, we gotta get Rick in there. Yeah, we do. Matter of fact, you know what? I'll let you lead uh, Rick's deal. So why, why don't we talk to Rick and then we'll we'll jump into jump into yours so we can get the truck thing going really uh, quick. So before we do that, let's hear from. Hey, Lippy. racers, Glenn Tower here from the Northwest Race Report. You know, with the invention of the internet, our local go kart shops have really taken a huge blow. One of the great go kart shops out there is O'Hagan's Carts and Supplies. They offer a great selection of carts, parts, and service. We all want to win, and O'Hagan's wants to help. O'Hagan's Carts and Supplies, Lebanon, Oregon. All right. Your favorite drivers and people of interest in the motorsports world. It's time for In the Seat, powered by Blue Line Graphics. Yeah, yeah. So, Rick, bring it to us. You are a big rig driver. Yeah, uh, driver of the number 12, 12th man Seahawks truck, Rolling Thunder Big Rigs. So, tell us, uh, tell us what it's like to be out there in a big rig doing what you do. In a word, scary. <laughs> I, I love the honesty for sure but uh how long have you been doing it uh this would be my sixth season with rolling thunder sixth season and how many states do you guys cover uh typically uh washington oregon we've been as, uh, as far as montana been up in canada at all uh the owner of the series did race uh canada uh for a couple of years and then uh decided to found his own series Oh, nice. It's a little sketchy getting over the border once in a while, especially if you got crew people like we used to have when we were drag racing. We mm-hmm. had to leave half of them on this side when we went over. So. <laughs> <laughs> I can relate uh, with that. Why are you laughing, Jeff? Were you one on this side? <laughs> no, I can go both. I can get across. Yeah. Good choice there of yeah, words. Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> so, so Rick, uh, so what uh, what rig do you run? Uh Peterbilt Freightliner? Uh, actually, I'm running an 89 International. International. Um, just a little snub nodes um, for the folks in the listening audience. It's uh, similar to what an old school school bus would look like. A um, little single screw. Um, it's a heck of a lot of fun. A uh, little six cylinder Detroit 60, uh, excuse me, 6V92 in it. 13 speed, 10 speed transmission, 373 gears. So, uh, do you guys do anything to them to hop them up, or is it pretty much uh, whatever motor comes along goes into it? Uh, in a manner of speaking, we do hop them up. Um, basically, they're internally they're pretty well stocked. We do some injector work and some turbo work, uh, thanks to Alamo Turbo. Thanks. Um, they supply us with the turbos and we'll pump the injectors a little bit. Typically the little six V 92s are running, running somewhere in the neighborhood of six fifty to 700 horse. Holy moly. That's a, that's nice. That's a good in- output there. So uh, do they typically run two sets of rear duels or single sets? Is there a preference on that? Uh, we run what we call a, a single screw in the rear, just basically four tires across one axle in the back. Uh, my particular truck is, uh, uh, basically a leaf spring rear end with a third link set up to kind of uh, set the pinion angle on the back end of the truck. 
Nice. Do you guys do any ride height adjustments to it or anything like that? I know back in the day, everybody used to heat everything up and drop it down, cut stuff, channel it, drop it. Do you guys do any of that, or do you just pretty much leave it the way you find it? Uh, basically, our ride heights are uh, dictated by tire sizing uh, that we use. Um, we run typically a 315 on the right front. Uh, my truck in particular is running some 255s on the left side. Uh, to get a little bit of uh, left side weight. Um, as far as adjustments, uh, front axles on most of these trucks have been cut, the, the straight axle on these things, big gigantic three inch I-beam that uh, a gentleman by the name of uh, Mickey Iverson actually used to drive the uh, seven truck. Uh, he was a, a boiler and a fitter and has been our fabricator guy for years, did all this awesome work at the front ends and basically had taken these axles, cut them so that we could put shim plates to get our camber on the right front of these trucks. Nice. That's uh, that's some some confidence confidence in in him, because you're really putting back together uh, a a solid axle. So, mm -hmm. wow, that's uh, that's pretty impressive. So, what's your favorite track to run these at? Uh, personally, you know, being a, a retired asphalt racer, uh, excuse me. Uh, I have figured out that I really love the dirt. Oh. Um, it, it has become one of the tracks, the style of tracks, uh, typically a three eighths that I feel most comfortable on in this truck. Um, asphalt tracks uh, are a lot of fun. And the thing being with, uh, typically we, we have uh, 12 trucks, typically we'll run nine um, because real estate is a precious commodity, <laughs> let's say that. Amen. So. Uh, typically we'll run nine uh, a lot of the every truck has its own track that it likes and so uh, personally my favorite uh, I've got two of them uh, that pop out at mine number one being uh, Willamette Speedway down uh, in Oregon mm -hmm. and uh, Grace Harbor our, our hometown track that wouldn't be because you won down there would it well I'd, I guess I would be a little biased <laughs> but yes <laughs> maybe maybe not so what is it about the dirt and the asphalt that you like is it because the asphalt has a little, or excuse me, because the dirt has a little bit more give, it's a little bit more slide, and it's less um, work, or no? <laughs> there is no such thing as less work when you're talking <laughs> about racing trucks. These things are animals. You're, you're talking 13,000 pounds sideways. So um, the, what I have found that I enjoy most about the dirt is finding the groove. Um, typically, this truck that I drive, loves the high side so oh, i find day. the high side and i go with it um asphalt tracks uh, my truck in particular typically doesn't like the asphalt too much uh, it brings it's literally the epitome of dump trucking or pushing for those in the audience um, these things are not designed to go fast and turn left and to get them to do so it takes a lot of uh right foot input if you will Mm-hmm. i know what that's all about brakes are your friend when it comes to that mm-hmm so what is it that you uh, say causes the most work out of out of your ride um, when you're driving it? Is it, uh, um, you know, just trying to wrestle it around the corner or is it trying to get it woed up to get into the corner? Um, the most work would probably actually just be getting to the track. <laughs> uh, there we we've got a pretty diverse group of people uh, my my little race family at rolling thunder and it it <laughs> as i once told the owner mike gibbons when you put your head in your hands and you start to realize these are your monkeys this is your circus yeah it's uh, <laughs> it it it's a lot of fun but uh as far as working the truck around the track um dirt track the thing kind of drives itself uh, nice. the, the harder i push it um the better it turns um asphalt not so much i see i was leaving seattle the other day there after at the drags <laughs> on friday and i looked across from where i was parked at and here's three of them sitting there promoting the race for next week oh yeah look at that i like it yep Looks like a few internationals in that picture, too. Yeah, there's. A, I think the 10 truck was in the middle there. We've uh, Mine would be the 89, 12 truck on the back, and then we've got a 47, 48 international driven by Dave Barr, Dave the Polisher. And then uh, the, the 88 truck driven by uh, Josh Sinaski. Uh, it's kind of painted up like uh, Optimus Prime from the Transformer series. 
Kevin Bridges wants to know, where do you find scales for a 13,000-pound truck? <laughs> <laughs> Leave it to Bridges to ask that question. <laughs> They're, they're uh, in the bathroom. At the no. Tra- at the train tracks. If he's, they're in the bathroom. <laughs> no, unfortunately, it's called Washington State DOT. Oh, yeah. So he was close. He said truck stop. <laughs> Pretty but a- much. But actually, we have set these trucks up with uh, a grain scale that we have at the truck shop. So we can kind of get a rough guesstimate on left side weights and crosses. Right. What are the percentages on that on those things? I couldn't tell you. You don't know? He's a driving. I, I, I'm, I you drive. show up and roll. I show up and roll and uh, wrench where I can when I can. That's awesome. Sweet. So what got you into this? I mean, what were you doing before you got there? <laughs> well, uh, I was racing at uh, South Sound Speedway for years, uh, running, uh, used to be called Pier Stock Series down there, and then uh, graduated into the Street Stock Series. But back in 97, 98, uh, Mike Gibbons was running with uh, the Canadian Big Rigs at that time, and one of the big shows that would come to town was when they'd come out and put on a show at South Sound. So I can remember sitting in the stands and watching these guys out there, and I'm just in utter amazement of watching these, you know, 12, 13,000 pound rigs just flying around the track. And I watch Mike Gibbons come out of turn two, and he, he gets a little tight with another truck, and he climbs the, the rear wall and literally just wipes the pan right off the bottom of the motor. So, you know, everybody's just like, ah, going crazy. Is he going to get this truck put back together? And by the, and that was actually in a heat race so by the time the main event for that night had rolled around they had ran back to the shop got another oil pan put an oil pan on this this 60 series detroit or excuse me it was running 8b92 at that time uh and they got this thing up running and he went out and he finished quite well that night and at that time i i could not have imagined at that point in my life that you know fast forward 10 years later i'd be driving for this guy and and have gotten to be very close friends with him Ah, that's cool. That is certainly cool. So, I've only seen him on TV. I really want to get to the track, and I'm sad that it's going to be this weekend. But I'm glad for everybody else. You need to make it down there. Absolutely. August 20th, Grays yeah. Harbor Raceway. So you know none of the percentages, right? Because we got a listener here that was saying, how much crossway do you run in there? <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't tell you. Yeah, okay, I, I, that's I fair enough. I know it's enough uh, left side weight to help it turn left. <laughs> there, there you go. <laughs> What yeah. are you going to move around? The driver, all 150 pounds of him? Come on. Where are you going to go? Yeah. Where you know, are you going to go? You can go with Stagger, though. So do you guys well, do you guys run different tires, or is it DOT tires? Well, they are DOT sticker tires uh, provided to us by our sponsor, GCR, out of Tacoma, um, thanks to Gerald and, and the crew up there. But uh, as far as our staggers go, we'll, you know, your tire sizes make a big difference, whether it's go-karting, uh, uh, you know, late model racing, whatever, but we'll run, uh, like I say, a, a 315 on the right front, we'll run some 255s, which are considerably smaller on the left side, and then kind of, um, I'll run a stagger, uh, pretty much, I'm, I'm running 295s across the rear axle, but I will control stagger by the air pressure that I'm putting into these guys. So I may be running 30 pounds on my, my extreme left rear and running 70 pounds on extreme right rear. Okay. So I'll just try to get that little bit of bias back there. Do you guys do anything with the airbags in the back either, or is that pretty much uh, equal side to side? Uh, these trucks aren't set up on an airbag system. They're leaf spring. Oh, they are leaf mm-hmm. spring. Oh, wow. That's Leafs are the deal, especially on dirt. Maybe that's why it only works good on the dirt. It, it could be. <laughs> Bag it and see what happens. Yeah, that, that would be interesting. Bag that's it and nice. drag it. Do you, no, no, don't drag it. Keep going over. <laughs> Do you, well, uh, well, speaking of that, we have had these things out on a drag strip, ran them down at Coos Bay, uh, down doing a, a nice. promo charity event. And we actually had one of the trucks run, uh, what was it, a 1402 at 109 miles an hour. That's wow. stout. Is it? Stout's pretty yeah. stout. And that was piloted by Jeff Swanstrom, who was a retired drag racer at the time. Super cool guy. Just just could get with the program. Well, too, explain what Mike did before with his little jaunt up the hill. Uh, which one? Oh, oh, actually, the, the 76 truck um, driven by Leo Norris now. 
has actually been to Pikes Peak. Uh, back in 2004, 2005, uh, Mike actually, it was a dream of his to go and run Pikes Peak. Right. So he, he put it on the trailer along with uh, a couple other guys, crew guys, and went over and ran that thing 2004, 2005. And there was a, a gentleman by the name of Mike Ryan who is a, a huge Hollywood stuntman uh, pilot, does a lot of just about any movie you've ever seen that a truck was driven in it um, in the last 20 years. Mike Ryan was piloting the thing. So he went over there and ran against uh, uh, Mike Ryan, and not so much against him as, as the mountain was, but uh, and actually finished enough to raise some eyebrows uh, of Mike Ryan. So uh, a pretty interesting deal when you start at the bottom of the hill with X amount of horsepower and you lose 50% of it by the time you get to the top. Absolutely. Right. Yeah, that is, that's crazy. It God. is. Well, man, Rick Casable, our guest, and uh, but been cool having you man hey i appreciate you guys having me in it's been a blast yeah absolutely we're gonna we'll, we'll have him on again because he's now he's got a little taste so we'll have him float in from time to time and <laughs> definitely be careful keep us keep for. keep us in check here a little bit but <laughs> so we got some lapping with lippy and we got some jeff stuff to get into so let's uh let's hit that Lapping with Lippy. Go ahead, Lip. Thank you for that, Terry. Uh, tonight's Lapping with Lippy is brought to you by Scott Seal Coat. For all your asphalt sealing and striping needs, get a hold of Scott Seal Coat. We'll stripe it or seal it, whatever's needed. Just get a hold of Scott at Scott Seal Coat. So, uh,. I've been asked about my point standings for the call-ins, and I know that Dan Watkins is still holding down number one. Jason definitely has moved up, but I'm not sure how far because I did not get to stop and grab all my notes for that. So I apologize for that, and I will have it next week for everybody. Um, and I also want to let everybody know that obviously last weekend went off well. Uh, thank you for everybody that uh, stepped up, volunteered, made it all happen. That's what uh, we need to do here in the Northwest to keep karting alive and uh you know keep uh keep keep it happening. Uh the Betty Boop will happen for sure. Uh, Miss Paula Lorenz has came back from uh, retirement to score that weekend for me. Uh, so we'll definitely have some scoring in the house to uh, make all that happen. Uh, there's been some uh, some good changes uh, since last weekend. Uh, the clubs decided to uh, put up two hundred and fifty dollars for the uh, pro open class, and uh, after we. Uh, told the uh, everybody about that as we were adding it uh, it was during our meeting after the race was all over with we had several individuals that stepped up for additionals uh, the first was Ronnie Cox for an additional $100 uh, Kevin White for another $100 Alton uh, for another $100 Milton for another $100 and I believe Uncle Chuck's Racing also stepped up for another $100, which uh, brings a payout, which is going to be for one, two, and three positions of the Pro Open class up to $750. We also had uh, Mr. Steve Miller Sr., who stepped up with an additional $500 to be dispersed through the rest of our classes that were all adult classes. So we will be paying first, second, and third in all of our adult classes as well. Um, and uh, Don Kravitz stepped up for a hard charger award in the Yamaha Heavy. Uncle Chuck's, uh, Chuck Knutson stepped up for uh, $50 for a hard charger in the Yamaha Light class. So we also have that. Uh, we're also going to be handing out a little something something for the longest pole. Whoever comes from the furthest distance is also going to be getting something from the club uh, that shows up for the race weekend on the Betty Boop. So, uh, you know, get up there, show your support, and uh, and let's all make it happen. It's going to be a great weekend. Uh, you know, we're going to have a Friday night practice. It's going to be from 5 until 9 uh, Saturday is going to take off on our regular schedule at uh, 1230. We're going to have some practice. And then after that, we're going to go into our uh, uh, into our, our heat races. And then as soon as we're done with our heat races, we're going to take our lunch break, break, dinner break, whatever you want to call it. And then we will be running under the lights after that. 
yes, we did, uh, w during the meeting, we uh, had some new board members come aboard. Uh, Joe Stackman and Art Pipkin uh, both came came on board, as well as my wife re-upped her uh, uh, board membership. Re re uh, well, yeah, she, she and them also... Uh, were moved into board membership positions. Uh, Rusty Rossmeyer was moved out of a board member and into a treasurer, and I re up for another two years of the presidency of the club. So good things happening. Uh, good people coming on board. Art's a past president. Joe's a past president. It's really going to resonate down through the club uh, for some great guidance and, uh, you know, just moving forward to keep karting going forward. So. You know, get up and support us and, and make it happen. We are also uh, coming up on the uh, uh, Salem Fairgrounds, uh, you know, uh, during the fair, the, the race down there. If you guys have uh, signed up for that stuff and you're going to be part of it, please follow through on that. This is a big opportunity for all of us in the karting world to to get what we do in front of everybody and build a, a fan base and and uh you know uh, people that actually want to come out and watch us through the winter down there so you know if you signed up for the salem fairgrounds race and 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 uh you're gonna do it you know be there be on your best behavior and, you know, put on a good show. It doesn't necessarily mean everybody's got to win, but put on a good show and make a good effort of it. And, and let's see some sportsmanship to uh, let's draw in a fan base down there in Salem. We've got the racers. We just don't have the fan base to uh, keep all this stuff going. So, you know, support Jason down there and, uh, you know, make it happen. It's a it's a really great deal. I didn't know we were going to be in a different building down there, so that's even a bigger deal. It's going to be a, a totally enclosed deal with, uh, you know, seating all the way around it. So even if you're not going to be racing in it, try to get to the fair that day and, and get in there and watch it. It's going to be a, a super good race. So, uh, you know, be part of it and, and be part of what uh, grows carding in the Northwest because we need it to happen all over the place, not just up here and not just down there. It's everywhere. Absolutely. Right on. Well, it's time for uh, we're going to get a little word with Jeff at the track. But first, before I go, I want to give a huge shout out to a young lady who has been doing quite well. Uh, her name is Bailey Jean Suchich, and she has been uh, Lippy. You've been seeing the stuff up, but she has been killing it lately. And she's running three cars, three different cars. I mean, she's doing all kinds of great stuff. So. Bailey Jean, if you're listening, um, man, good job, kid. Keep up the good work. You are uh, you're you're flat doing uh, an outstanding job, and we're all proud of you. So, good, good, good stuff there. So, we're gonna get with uh, Jeff here. Time for at the track with Jeff. Go ahead, Jeffrey. Brought to you by South Sound Automotive. Stop by, see Frank and the boys. Yeah, this last uh, Friday I got the pleasure of uh, running up to Pacific Raceways and re reacquainting myself with some people I hadn't seen for a while. Um, I, I learned I learned a ton of stuff. I was really uh, I stopped by the Parkers. Oh, good, you did. And uh, had a conversation with Randy. Sat in the trailer for probably twenty five thirty minutes. And did he remember Lippy? Oh yeah, oh yeah. He I was wanted, there on he Thursday. Wanted, oh, he, he wanted to know well, how come we didn't show up and do the show. <laughs> I said you were so busy trying to get stuff ready, you wouldn't have had time. Well, I'd have made it. <laughs> so anyway, we got. Uh, I was, you know, we're kind of discussing the, the, you know, like alcohol car fields up there weren't full by no means. Eleven and twelve cars showed up for the two classes, and I, I can remember when it used to be twenty four trying to fight for the 16 spot amen so i uh, kind of was talking with him you know and i understand it's money it's cubic dollars to run them cars so here they've changed to a completely different combination they're running in the injected nitro the a fuel cars so i looked at him and he says what's your advantage and he just looked at me and started laughing he says you can't believe it all he said i've done this years ago 
you don't uh, you don't turn the motor over about 67. And with a al- blown alcohol car, you leave the starting line at 67. Yes, you, sir. You're not. Uh, you can run a regular oil pan. You don't have to run a wet sump because the motor doesn't, because the blower building all the pressure isn't sucking all the oil out of the crankcase. So when you go across the finish line, it doesn't, you know, blow up. So he said there was so many advantages. He said they've hurt a couple bearings. That's all they've hurt and all the runs they've made. It's just phenomenal. The, and you talk to his wife and, you know, hey, you know, how's, uh, how do you like this? Oh, my gosh, this thing just keeps on pulling and pulling and pulling. So it was, it was very interesting. Uh, very his, cool. His uh, brother, Russ, was crew chiefing for uh, Mike. I can't even say this guy's name. He's from the he's from Oregon down there, I, and uh, they were having a tough time getting hold of the racetrack. Um, I wandered down into the the big circle down there and got to sit down and talk with Jay Livingston. Uh, Jay's Jay Bird. Jay Bird's second race in and out top alcohol car. He's driving for Stephen Patty Federlin, and uh, as of Saturday, when he lost first round. But and he didn't have very good light. I won't bother him about that. I don't think I'd have very good light either. But was he snoozing? Uh, yeah, he kind of. <laughs> He's taking a nap. Yeah, he took a nap. I was trying to be nice, but you it, don't be nice, to Jay. <laughs> he don't get it. <laughs> but he ran a five thirty three at two sixty five, which was his best lap ever. Um, number one qualifier was only a twenty one, so you're only a tenth a little bit off. So. That was pretty impressive, especially with Steve and Patty. They haven't raced for four years. Their stuff isn't up to snuff with everybody else's. It's what's been going along. But Steve's a smart cat. He got it. He got the car to run. And, and Jay has a whole new respect for the racer. Is it, is that alcohol? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, and um, I got to uh, sit around and talk with uh, Brian Howe. Um, I signed his license when he got into his first alcohol funny car. That's got to be kind of cool. I really like that guy. Yeah, we we had quite a conversation about where what's been going on, what's you know how things are going, and it's so funny because he'll go back to a race, you know, like like back in Chicago, and hear his son Dylan's at Woodburn racing junior dragsters. <laughs> you know, uh, Dylan just loves. I mean, he says when he gets old enough to drive, I'm in trouble because I'm out. Yeah, <laughs> the kid will be in the car. <laughs> Um, uh, some of the pro guys I got to talk with, uh, 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 why am I drawing a blank on this one? Uh, McMillan and, uh, he's a, he's, <laughs> he's quite a character cause they got this big lizard and Amelie oil sponsored it and there's a big lizard down the car. So I, for some reason I get asphyxiated with that thing. It just drives you. These eyeballs go by you down the track and they just follow you. <laughs> 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 Uh, Clay Clay McMillan, it talked to him for a little while. He lost his son here eight months ago. And uh, his kid was actually driving uh, monster trucks. And he uh, was goofing around on a weekend and was messing around on his four-wheeler and crashed his four-wheeler and killed him. Wow. So I had quite a conversation with him about he's he's working with another guy by the name of Doug Herbert, which used to be a top fuel racer. Yep, yep. Also lost both his sons. He lost both of his sons in one accident. Yep. So, uh, and since Doug has gotten to a deal, it's called breaks and he is teaching these kids they are going around the country and they, they got help from Hyundai dealers and they're bringing them cars and they're teaching these kids what and what not to do. And, uh, Clay's gotten in with, um, Doug and <laughs> it's kind of funny because they're for the longest time. The two of them hated each other. Yes, they did. That's I mean, they were at the other end of the track. I mean, Clay's only like this and Doug's like this and they're <laughs> And it's they're friends. They would just assume cool. fist fight back then. That's cool. Um, so 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 your take of all this over the weekend. I mean, what what when you went home and actually thought about it? I mean, what what was what did what was the biggest thing you got out of it? That I have never seen Seattle's racetrack that good ever. Oh yeah. I it, usually you'll go to Seattle and one lane's good, one lane's bad. But when you can run side by side, three eighties, at three hundred miles an hour, 
it's impressive. It was just a good weekend up there. Yeah. I was there on Thursday, and the track looked phenomenal then, so it just only got better. Well, you know, and, and just listening to you, I mean, the, the thing I kind of take away from it is, you know, it goes back to what, what we always say all, all along, whether it's the boop or whether it's, you know, you know the rolling thunder or whatever. Um, uh, it's all about the people, it's, man. Exactly. It's the people. And you don't, uh, I, I don't realize how much I miss those guys, except for I only do it once a year now. Right. Uh, when I worked at Woodburn, um, it was two and three times a year because a lot of the funny car guys came in match raced at Woodburn. So I, I knew them guys, Clint Thompson, Brian Howe. Um, all D- of them. Doug yeah. Gordon. All them guys were always there. Right. So it's, you know, yeah, it's fun to, it's fun to connect again. Yes. Even though it's just for the one time, you know, for the weekend or maybe one day, like this one was one day. But you never know what that's going to network into, right? I mean, it, you just don't. Exactly. Oh, and speaking of something too, back to the, our first deal, not to drag the subject of Brian Clausen, but Rico Abreu has set up a deal for this weekend where they're racing back at Knoxville. Yep. And he's got a cash bucket there that's to help the family. And everything he sells, he will match for the family. That's cool. Wow. wow. Unreal. Yeah, it is unreal. You know? that, that's the beauty of our sport as a whole is uh, – doesn't matter what you're rolling thunder, stock cars, go karts. We're 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 all in the same family. When 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 one one genre of racing loses somebody, we all lose somebody. Yeah, when you're when one's hurt, all's hurt. Yeah, 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 exactly. And that's the that's the blessing that I take from being involved in it. Um, it it's just awesome. And two this weekend. Yeah. If you get a chance, you go down to the Graves Harbor Fair. You can go to the races for the price of the fair admission. So if you are at the fair wandering around, the races start, wander up into the stands, you may watch the races for free. That's awesome. That's awesome. And there'll be mod street stocks and tuners there. Yeah. Well, Matt, it's about that time. We we could go on forever. It's like, mm-hmm. man, you know, sometimes we need two, sometimes we need three, sometimes we only need a half. But uh, we want to thank everybody for when tuning was that? in. Tuning in. Well, yeah. <laughs> But uh, we'll never have. But, um, yeah, lots of cool stuff going on this weekend. So whatever you do, you know, have a have a good time. Um, Monster trucks at South Sound. I'm not sure about that one. Yeah. Wow. The, the 27th, there's a big one. TV is going to be there for the uh, asphalt guys, the go-karts at Tri-Cities, the uh, uh, Saturday night shootout. I'm hoping, you know, maybe Lippy will show up more and try some asphalt there. I don't know. It might be kind of cool. But Isn't there a Gold Cup coming up this weekend? Uh, the Gold Cup is the same weekend as ours. So that's oh, the 19th okay. to 20. That's going to be at McMinnville. And so that's going to. somebody was going down to Texas or something. There is. Ricky Worley. Yeah. Ricky Worley. I think Chris Worley. Yep. Uh, there, uh, there was quite a few other. Yeah, there Western. was. Uh, the Smallies are going down. The Four Cycle Grands are down in, uh, is it Denton, Texas, I do believe, or Benton, Texas? Something like that. So they're going to be down there. So we should get some uh, results from Ricky Worley to see how everybody's doing down there. I think that's this coming weekend. Yep. So good luck to all those guys down there. Well, and, well uh, it's got. Uh, the super sports are running twin 50s so they run 50 and then they go back and they run another 50 later cool so, that's really cool i believe jason susage has a few extra tickets for that deal so if you're looking for some help to get in get a hold of jason yeah you can find him on uh salem Thanks. facebook or salem speedway on facebook or uh salem speedway one dot wordpress dot com you can find all the info there Man, big shout out to Rick Casebolt for being our guest. He's our blue line graphics in the seat guest. Big shout out to, uh, boy, South Sound Automotive, uh, Creative Ink and Design, Blue Line Graphics, uh, Scott Seal Coat, Wicked Fabrication. O'Hagan's O. O'Hagan's Big Jerry O, baby. Uh, he's got some cool stuff going. Um, I'm going to be at uh, Wix this weekend, so anybody gets the wild hair, come kick a tire or two. Out there, a big car show going on at Wicked Fab. You'll see some nice, nice oh, stuff. There was stuff in the shop that was nice. Well, yes, it was, <laughs> for sure. Lippy, thanks for your efforts fighting that two hours of traffic to be here, man. We uh, we love it. We appreciate it. Yeah, it's all worth it. Yeah, for sure, man. Uh, Jeffrey, great, 
great job this weekend at the drag. That's uh, that's cool stuff. Uh, I, I just well, it, it was I, awesome. It's awesome hearing your stories. It's really good stuff. Yep, yeah, I, I loved it there. Good deal. Well, hey, racers in life and as on the racetrack, if somebody's taking the low side lip, what do you got to do? You're going to go to the high side and hit it hard. Absolutely. Good night, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next week. And uh, whatever you do this weekend, be safe. Be safe. Northwest Race Report brought to you in part by Blue Line Graphics, Wicked Fabrication, O'Hagan's Carts and Supplies, South Bay Automotive, Creative Ink and Design, and Scott Seal Coat. Informing, improving, and inspiring racers everywhere. The Northwest Race Report, Wednesday nights, 6.30, exclusively at terrybridges.com.